reading to you from the 22nd chapter of Revelation and with the 18th verse. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds anything to them, God will add to them him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes away from this book of prophecy, God will take away from him his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. He who testifies to these things says, Yes, I am coming soon. Good evening, my dear listening friends. Again, this evangelist Cecil Moe. And as you know, I'm a converted alcoholic. Gave my heart to Christ over 55 years ago in a pastor's home in Seattle, Washington. Then one year later, God called me to preach. And my stars, I've said so many times, these last 55 years are shot by so quick. Well, why? Because I'm doing what God called me to do. Have I always done what God wants me to do? No, friends, I can't say that because I'd be lying. I've tried. Now, I've failed him many times, but oh, my dear friends, I've been preaching on the radio now for 40-some years. What a joy. And I keep getting phone calls and people around the United States who uh, uh, I preach in their church and they'll call me. It just makes me so happy. Well, listen, if you're having a troubled time tonight and a troubled heart, won't you kick off your slippers, sit back and relax, pour you a glass of iced tea or a cup of coffee. Let's see what the Lord has for us, okay? If you have your Bibles with you, turn with me to the book of Job, and let's begin reading with the fourth verse. Who can bring what is pure from the impure? No one. Then we look over here at verse 10. It says, But man dies and is laid low. His breath his last and is no more. And then we read from verse 14. If a man dies... Will he live again? All the days of my hard service, I will wait for my renewal to come. Well, we've answered this, uh, label this, Jesus answered Job's questions. Now, listen, friends. Job was a good man with many blessings. He was upright, honest, faithful, he was a father of seven sons and three daughters, a very wealthy man. But you know what? All this was going on pretty good, and one day the devil walked up to Job and said, to the God and says, You know what? Oh, the only reason that Job loves you is because you've made him a rich man. Now he said, If you let me kill his children and his animals, and, and uh, you'll find out that he'll he won't love you no more. Listen, God knows your heart. He knows my heart. And God took the challenge. He said, okay, you can do that. However, you can't take his life because his life is mine. Friends, if you're born again, you are born into the family of God. What an honor to have God the Father uh, watching over us and Jesus dying on the cross, and he paid for our sins. All these things are behind us. We know these things because we read them in the Word of God. But tragedy does strike Job and his family. His oxen and his asses were stolen. His servants were killed. Lightning strikes his sheep, and more servants die. His camels are stolen, and more servants lost. His children die in a storm, and then, to make matters worse, poor old Job was covered with painful boils. Now, Job raises questions that were answered later by Jesus. Now, here's what he said. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? See, as good as Job may be and as closely as he tried to follow the Lord, he felt unclean. Now, 
the reason he feels unclean, and this could be your problem too tonight, he is focusing on his problems. Now, he dreads standing before God, and I read in verse 3, Do you fix your eyes on such a one? Will you bring him before you for judgment? Well, <clears throat> he still dreads to stand before God. Who can make sinful people clean? Well, Jesus said he specializes in it. Isn't that neat? He made the woman at the well clean. Remember John 4? Many of the Samaritans from the town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. See, friends, how important it is that you share your testimony. Now, here was a woman of ill repute. And uh, after she accepted Jesus, she ran back to town. And they knew who she was. Married five times. Guy she was living with, she wasn't even married to. And she said, my stars in the morning. I have met a man that told me everything that I've ever done. See, share your testimony. It's so terribly important. You say, well, Cecil, how can I do that? I'm not a, I never was a stinking drunk like you. I don't care. Fact the matter is, if you want to know the truth, I'd rather hear testimonies from people who didn't live in deep sin. How's that grab you? That's exactly right. Well, he made the woman at the well clean. That's exactly what he did. And he made the palsied man clean. And I read in Mark 2, 5, When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins have been forgiven. I remember the first revival I ever preached in my life was in Bellingham, Washington. The pastor and I went out to see a uh, a man that, uh, well, they call it the St. Vitus Dance is what they call it. They shake all the time, shake everywhere. They had to put mittens on this man, and he could hardly, barely talk. But the one thing he told me, he said, I don't care. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Beloved, can you say that tonight? Can you really say you love Jesus? Well, the only way that you can do that is if you've repented, told the Lord that you were sorry for your sins, and invited Christ into your heart. That's the only way. That's the only way that you can be clean and be free. He made the crooked Zacchaeus clean. And I read in Luke 19, But Zacchaeus stood up and said, listen to this, stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here I am now, here and now, I am half of, I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because this man, too, is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man come to seek and to save, came to seek and to save that which is lost. Friends, listen. Zacchaeus was a tax collector, and he was a little stinker. He had beaten, swindled, just like our tax, bear, tax uh, people in America do. You know what? I, you've seen this on television. Well, they say, if you owe so many dollars in taxes, you contact us and we'll work with the IRS. You don't have to talk to them. Well, one time, just one time only, I got in trouble with the IRS. And it wasn't my fault. I never did the filing. I had an accountant, and he was crooked. He truly was a crooked accountant. And he even put in there that we had guard dogs to protect our property, which we never did. And he took off so much. So anyway, I contacted this attorney. Cost me $1,500, I believe. And he went right to the IRS, and I got off without spending a dime. How thankful I was. Friends, listen, don't try to beat the government, even though they're beating us every day. Don't try to beat them. Let God do it for you. Let God, God don't beat people, but God will take care of you if you let him and you, you're walking with him and trying to do God's will. 
He'll see you through all this stuff. Listen, Job thinks of the shortness in life, and I read in verse 10, but man dies and is laid low. His breaths, he breathes his last and is no more. Well, he compares himself to a flower. Well, where do people go when they die? Well, let's read in Matthew 10, 28. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of those who can destroy both soul and body. Where? In hell. See, Jesus said lost people go to hell. Well, he also tells us in Luke 16, the story of the rich man and Lazarus. The rich man was tormented in flames, and he wanted Lazarus to come dip the tip of his finger in water to cool my tongue because I am in agony as fire. People say, oh, I don't believe it. Well, you better believe it because that's what the Bible says. Jesus gave us that story. Jesus saved, said, say people go to heaven, and I read in John 14, let not your heart be troubled. Trust in God. Do not be afraid. In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. Listen, heaven awaits for everyone who has been born again. I told you that this pastor's wife, a dear friend of ours, we used to have lunch with him about once a month, my wife and I. She had uh, breast cancer, and, uh, well, they went in and took it off, and bingo, she she lived for a while, and they gave her those awful chemo uh, chemo treatments. Oh. Anyway, she got bad, and bang, in a month and the time she got down, she was in glory. God took her home, and I'm so grateful that he took her home that she didn't have to suffer anymore. But see, he promises those who know him that he'll take us to heaven. Now you say, well, see, so I don't understand that. Well, I'll put it this way. You ever go to bed at night, tuck yourself in, pull the covers up on your neck, go to sleep, have a good night's rest, you wake up in the morning, that's exactly what it's going to be like when you die. You'll just shut your eyes for a moment, and you'll open your eyes in glory. No, there's no soul sleep. You go immediately to the Father. Remember the thief on the cross? Jesus said, in the, when he asked Jesus, Remember me, Lord, when thou comest into the kingdom. And Jesus said, From this day forth thou shalt be with me in paradise. Again, and never heard another sermon. He never got baptized. He never joined a church. But he had the promises of Jesus that that very day he would be with him in paradise. See, so there's no soul sleep like the Adventists try to tell you. Well, Paul agreed, 2 Corinthians 5, 8, we are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. Now, <laughs> Paul was between the devil and the deep blue sea. He was betwixt. He'd rather be in heaven but the reason he wanted to stay here is because he had lots of work for Paul to do, and Paul did do it. Well, then Job asked the question, and I'm sure you might have asked this question. I know I did. If a man die, will he live again? Well, Job wants to know what happens to the body. He thinks about the loss of his children. I'm sure it was a terrible loss. The storm and the sorrow, the wreckage, and the weeping. And he, Jesus, promised Job the resurrection. And I read in John eleven twenty five, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Oh, my stars, friends. Hey, friend, let me ask you this. If there was no resurrection, I would have nothing to say tonight. No, 
you and I would have nothing to look forward to if there was no resurrection. Now, you remember when they when they crucified Jesus and they put him in the borrowed tomb and they rolled that big, huge, huge stone up there. Well, they said, well, we we got rid of this guy. He He's through. He's cooked. No more. Well, I got news for you boys. You couldn't put him in a. You couldn't have put him anywhere. You couldn't seat him in a thousand tons of cement. Because on the third day, the Bible said he arose. Well, you say, yeah, they say that. Yes, but five hundred or so of his own people saw him after the resurrection. It's not like Paul said this or so. It's because he rose from the dead. And you and I have, that's our guarantee. Now, let me see. Let me get over here. I'm trying to find something here. Just a second. Ah, oh, here we were. Now, oh, boy. 1 Corinthians 15, 20. Let's look at that and see what it says. 15, 20. All right, 15, 20. My eyes aren't as fast as they used to be. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead came also through a man. You remember Adam and Eve? They messed up. They sure did. Well, then what happened? They got thrown out of the garden, and sin enveloped the world. What a heartache! And you remember God was, you know what God wanted? He wanted a family. Now, hey, I got to tell you something. I got a little great-granddaughter that's uh, two and a half years old, and we've never bonded. We have never bonded. She wouldn't have hardly anything to do with me. I don't know what happened, but something happened. And now every time she learns something new, she comes and she tells me about it. Grandpa? And she learned to pop her lip, and she learned to snap her fingers, and I don't know. And, on and on. so the other night, <laughs> she came in my room, and she said, uh, "Grandma," and she handed me this this uh, hand lotion. And I said, "Well, just put it in her in the bathroom." Well, she didn't understand that, so she come and she squirted a little on her fingers, and she smelt it. Oh, it had a beautiful smell. So she come up, and she put both hands on both sides of my face, and she rubbed it on my face, and then she smelt, and then she kissed me. And then she rubbed my arms. And I tell you, friends, you talk about, you talk about heaven on earth. What a joy my grandchildren have brought in my life. Someone once said, and I don't know who it was, said that grandchildren is God's way of rewarding us for growing old. If that's the truth, then I praise the Lord for it because they have brought so much joy into my life. How fortunate we are to have the promises of Jesus. Such clear promises were not known to Job. Listen, friends, I got a nicest phone call the other day and this man said, uh, Cecil, how are you? And I said, well, you know, today, uh, not too good. Yesterday, I felt pretty fair. And he said, I just wanted to call and thank you for that night or that day. You allowed me to come into your home. And you sat there on your chair. And you unfolded the most beautiful love story I guess I've ever heard that God loves alcoholics. I said, well, you know how I could tell that story? Because a man told me, a man of God told me that story. And I said, I'm not adding to it. I'm not taking away from it. I'm telling you exactly what he wants for your life. Well, he said, well, I'll tell you this. I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. Well, I said, I'm glad to hear that. And he said, also... I'm sorry for my sins. I said, well, that's good. And pretty soon as we kept on talking and sharing, pretty soon I noticed that there was a tear coming out of his eye. 
And I said, Kevin, listen, God loves you tonight with an everlasting love. And if you're willing to kneel here with me and tell God that you're sorry for your sins and invite him into your heart, he will forgive you and he will save you. Now, this is a year later. This is a year. And I wouldn't have been able to tell that story had I not been taking cancer treatments. I would have never been able to tell him because this lady that was giving me the treatment was telling me about him. Said, Cecil, he's an alcoholic. He's losing his business. He's losing everything he has. And I told her to have him come or I'll call him. And he called me and he came down and I had the privilege of introducing him to Christ. Friends, listen, that could happen to you. Do you pray for some ter- do you pray for lost souls? Now here's a prayer that I try to teach everybody that knows me. And here's a morning prayer and an evening prayer. Lord, fill me with your blessed Holy Spirit and do me with power on high. Lord, give me holy boldness and give me precious souls for my hire. Friends, that really, really, really works. Oh, it certainly does. You try that prayer and then keep your eyes open because God's going to send somebody by for you to witness to for the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, see... In uh, Job fourteen fifteen, Job's uh, faith begins to increase. He said, if a man dies, will he live again? All the days of my hard service, I will wait for my renewal to come. You will call and I will answer you and will long for the creation, your creature of uh, creature your hands have made the creature your hands have made my stars in the morning job listen he'd been through a lot maybe you've been through a lot tonight maybe your life has been all messed up and maybe you, you just feel like what's the use i'm gonna throw in the towel the other day a man over here was distraught he jumped off a uh, freeway a bridge in front of an SVUV, and he was killed immediately. Now, he thinks and he thought that his problems were over when he committed suicide. Beloved, his... Oh, I don't know where he went, but I tell you, suicide is not the way. How many times I tried to commit suicide, suicide three times, and I failed, and ho, oh, ho, my stars in the morning am I glad I failed oh if I hadn't I'd be in hell tonight well his full confidence of resurrection was found in Job 19.25 I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand upon the earth and after my skin has been destroyed yet in my flesh, I will see God. Friends, I wonder, are you going to see God when you die? You say, oh, Cecil, I hope so. Well, the Bible tells us in First John five thirteen, this is written that you may know that you have passed from death unto life. That's what he said. Oh, friends, real life is living for Jesus there's nothing in all this world. Someone told me the other way, lots of times. You know, that Christian life must be boring. It isn't boring. <laughs> I'm so busy, I don't have time to do all the things that I've been called to. That's why I've been have to slow down, you know, and I had to give up a lot of my prisons. And it was tough. It was really tough for me to do it. I had to give up some of my broadcasts that I had four different states I was broadcasting in. I had to give some of them up. And let's face it, I'm not a uh, superman. I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. But let me ask you, would you like to tonight settle it between you and Jesus? Would you like to tell him that you're sorry for your sins and invite him to your heart? Well, you can. If your old heart's got a tugging at it, that's the Holy Spirit drawing you. Now, here's what I want you to do, and don't you dare do this unless you mean it. 
I want you to bow your head to me right now and I want you to pray this powerful, powerful prayer. Dear Lord, I confess that I'm a sinner. Lord Jesus, I belong to a church for years. I read the Bible, I pray, but I guess I just knew about Jesus but didn't know him. Tonight, Lord, I'm opening my heart and receiving you as Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, if you prayed that prayer, won't you get on the phone and call 303-471-8534. Oh, I won't use your name on the air. Oh, I won't embarrass you. And I sure won't sit down and write and ask you for any money. I don't care where you go to church. I'm only concerned where you spend eternity. 303-471-8534. I'm waiting for your call. Friends, for the past half hour, your host has been Evangelist Cecil Moe. Oh, dear friends, if I can help you some way. I Listen, I've been through a lot of heartaches in my life, a lot of deaths, a lot of health problems. But I know that Jesus Christ is the answer. You say, Cecil, I don't know if I'd, I'd like to talk to you, but I'm kind of afraid. Hey, don't be afraid. I'm easy to talk to. And I'm concerned, I certainly am concerned what you're going through. And I'll pray for you. So, you give me a ring if I can help you. Pray for my wife and I as we go to prison. Pray for our health. I've been having some kind of problems the last month now. And oh, friends, I hate to slow down. I really do. But, you know, God's a boss. I just work for him. He don't work for me, I work for him. Well, friends, listen, <clears throat> I want you to be good. Your neighbor, stay sweet. Keep looking up for this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Jesus is coming soon. Good night, and may God bless you real, real good. <laughs>